Welcome everyone to this month's version of Pass Insights newsletter. I'm Hiram. I'm going to show you how to copy to Azure SQL from on-prem uh, with Azure Data Factory. Everything that I'm going to show you is available at this GitHub URL, by the way. Uh, like I mentioned, my name is Hiram Flatus, and this is all my contact information if you want to connect with me. All right, let's get to the demo. Now, I have a Data Factory already created here called Rig, and it's integrated with my GitHub repo, so you can see all the definitions of everything that I have uh, developed here. Now, there's three pipelines inside of my uh, Data Factory. One is called Leads, one is called Primer, the other one is called Troll Hunters. Now, Primer is going to control the other two pipelines, and Primer is the one that I have open here. Now, let me collapse here so we can focus on the canvas. You can click on the white spot and just drag it around. I've already ran this uh, pipeline, but that's why we're seeing the green checkboxes. But I'm going to walk you through each of the steps. Now, if I click on the canvas here inside of parameters, I have a couple of parameters already created. And the pipeline first is going to get the status of my Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Uh, because I need to determine if my Azure SQL Data Warehouse is paused, I need to start it so that my pipeline can succeed. And I'm going to transfer the data uh, using uh, two other pipelines, which we'll get to in a moment here. Now, this is the expression to go ahead and check the status of the pipeline. I'm going to authenticate to it uh, uses, using managed service identities. The next step is uh, an if condition. This is similar to SSIS, a, a split condition. And the expression for that is going to uh, check if it equals to online, well, if it does not, obviously that's the expression there at the beginning, not equals to online. Uh, and this is the property that we're checking, the output of the previous uh, activity that are returned uh, online. And the once that is true, it's going to go into the internal activity to go ahead and resume it. This is the expression for the resume. It's a post and we're using, a, again, the same type of authentication. Uh, if we go back to primer, the next step is an until uh, loop. This is the expression for the uh, until loop and the internal activity for that. It's going to just continue to get the status to until it's online. This is the expression for the URL. It's a method of get. And you saw the previous methods for the call to the API. And we're building that, this, the expression here is building the values based on the input parameters that I previously identified. Now, those previous parameters have default values. Um, if I go back here, I can show you what the default values are. In, in my case, you can set your own, so have them be blank. And then the, when you run your data factory, you have to provide those values in, uh, at the beginning of it. The next step is going to wipe my data warehouse and my Azure SQL DB that's hosting in hyperscale uh, just for the sake of the demo so that I can append new data. By wiping, what I mean is uh, just dropping the tables and recreating them. These are the two store procedures that do that. Uh, and then we need to include this here so we can see where we're looking at. And then we're going to execute the leads data, the leads pipeline. Now the leads pipeline is going to copy data from my on-premise SQL server, which is the, the one running on my workstation, just for the sake of this example. Uh, if we edit that data set, we could see that the connection is my workstation's name, and we're copying the table our customer account. If I were to click on edit here, you could see that the integration runtime I've created my own for, uh, if you were to click on new here, for example, so you, you can install this as well for your on-premise, it will be self-hosted. Um, so let me cancel back here, go back, go back here. And then we're going to sync that to Azure SQL DW. This is the, the data set there. Uh, the connection is, well, right now the data warehouse is paused. When we start this, we're going to bring it online. But it's not detecting the tables, but trust me, the table is basically the same name that you're seeing here. Um, all right, so following that, we have the same sort of source, and in this case, sync is going to be different. It's going to be uh, Azure SQL DB and Hyperscale. And then we're going to sync that to a table uh, here under connection called customer. 
So pretty pretty straightforward. Then on the primer, if we were to look at the, the canvas again, uh, lastly, I have the another if condition is basically if the warehouse is online, then pause it. I'll show you what that expression looks like here. So if the where if the uh, get status the internal activity uh, is called get status online in this case it has to be labeled a little bit different because we reuse that same name above the internal activity here for pausing this is the expression and what it looks like and again I'm authenticating the same way so we go back to primer and I can show you the output here now you have two ways to execute this uh, basically I clicked on debug to show you the the output right here on the screen it's uh, very useful but you could also click on add trigger add tri uh, trigger now uh, by clicking on the monitor uh, blade of Azure Data Factory will take you to the screen and then you can see the individual actions of each pipeline and you could see the parameters that were used to go during that run uh, but if I were to go back here to the output when I ran, uh, when I press debug, uh, this button instead, I could also see the output of each uh, call to the API. So this is very useful. Now, in your case, you may not have to copy data to both uh, Azure SQL DW and Hyperscale at the same time, or you may, or you may copy data from Azure SQL DW to Azure Hyperscale, or vice versa. So in this case, you can modify your source and your sync. Um, and let's see, you know, in summary, what we talked about, right? Uh, and what we have as far as resources. Everything that I showed you, you can, uh, it's available at this GitHub URL, the content of the Troll Hunters data set is around this Netflix TV show. This is uh, the character Toby. Then you have additional documentations that were helpful as well as the managed service identity. Let me cover that really quick because that was important. So I created a new uh, managed identity called HyMMI and I made the data factory rig a uh, contributor of it. Now a contributor lets you do everything except uh, control access of that resource. And I also went into the Azure uh, SQL server that's running the data warehouse and I made, uh, by clicking on add, you can add a row assignment, uh, rig and the uh, manage identity, uh, both contributors to it as well. Now what you're seeing here at Jarvis, it, it happens to be the, the run as account for uh, Azure Data Factory. Uh, okay, so lastly, um, speaking at Summit this year for the first time, I have two sessions. Uh, I hope that you're able to attend. One of them is on uh, Thursday morning and the second one is on Friday in the morning. I look forward to seeing you guys there. I hope you found this uh, session insightful. If you want to provide some feedback, this is a quick email that I have. And this is all my contact information. Thank you very much again.